Confession, the sacrament of transformation. You do not wish, Master, that the work of your hands should perish. Neither do you take pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Saint Basil the Great. Confession is the courage to reveal our vulnerability to sin and our perpetual need for the grace of God. Yes, this could be haunting for many of us, as we dread that exposing our vulnerability would invite contempt and hate. So should we simply restrain from expressing our emotions? Absolutely not. Our body needs to be constantly purged of emotional turmoil for us to remain healthy. Confession serves as a significant outlet for catharsis. If we read scripture, we can see that we are encouraged to speak out our sins for the overall well-being of our body, mind, and soul. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First letter of St. John, chapter 1, verse 9. How does one understand sin? The etymology of the word sin or hamartia in Greek means missing the target. A perfect analogy would be the game of darts. It is when we miss the bullseye. Through the incarnation, Christ has exemplified how humans ought to live. So, precisely, when we live in a way we ought not to, contrary to the one set forth by Christ, it is sin. Remember, Sin is no longer reliant upon a physical act. Rather, it begins at the conception of an evil thought. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. To sin is to remain in darkness. How do we know that we are in darkness? It is only when we come in close proximity with Christ, who is the light. It is like the Tyndall effect. Until a beam of light breaches a dark room, we are unable to see the dust particles present in it. That is the reason every Vespers we remind ourselves, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God has bestowed us with free will. Sin is the result of the choices we make out of temptations. Our free will is so great that God does not even heal us without our consent. In John chapter 5, verse 6, He asks us, Do you want to be healed? He heals us only when we consent. God is indeed the physician of our souls, but until we speak about our desire to be healed, God waits patiently. Repentance. Repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sins, but a fervent yearning towards our lost glory. The Old Testament uses the Hebrew word shub for repentance, which means to turn back. This is why as soon as we enter the church, we see a symbolic depiction of paradise, reminding us of our pursuit and passionate longing to the eternal kingdom. Don't think of confession as a pre-ritual in order to qualify for the Holy Eucharist or fulfill other ecclesiastical formalities. In reality, it is a continual process until death. Even if we confess right before the Holy Communion, within a span of few minutes, we could pollute our thoughts. That is why we pray and receive the Holy Eucharist for the remission of our sins. How do we feel repentant? We feel repentant only when our emotions are scripturally and liturgically mediated. Christ reveals himself through scripture and liturgy, which will illuminate our senses and allow us to discern Christ's expectations of us. So the church advises us to recite the prayer of repentance as well as meditate on a few psalms. It would be best to prepare a list of our sins and have them ready to confess before a priest. Why confess before a priest? We confess before a priest because the priest is an icon of Christ. We must remember that nobody is sinless, even the priest who hears the confession. So the effectiveness of confession doesn't depend on the holiness of the priest, but on the degree of our true repentance. It is Christ who hears and absolves the sins through the priest, for Christ has bestowed upon them through the apostles the power to absolve and retain sins. 
Confession is an act of being honest with God. We must speak what we are afraid to speak. You might ask, why do I need to confess to a priest? Why can't I speak directly to God in the privacy of my room? Or even, God knows all my sins. Why do I have to say them aloud? Feelings and emotions make the confession real. Rather than superficial and abstract feelings in the privacy of our rooms, we personally feel anxiety, nervousness, and vulnerability to its core when we confess to a priest. It also allows us to claim accountability for our sins rather than fleeing from them like Adam and Eve. Their reluctance to confess their sins drove them out of paradise. Through the priest, Christ offers the confessant a tangible presence of forgiveness, a concrete assurance that despite our sins, we are still worthy to be loved and to love. Thus we pray before our confession, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God, I am a sinner and I am confessing my sins. My spiritual Father, I trust in your divine authority to absolve my sins. I have sinned in my thoughts, deeds, feelings, and in my words. Therefore I confess before you. You are the mediator between God and me. I pray to receive absolution and mercy through your prayers. Amen. But we believe that it is in fact Christ who in essence absolves our sins. So we pray, O Lord, I thank you for forgiving my sins that I have confessed before your priest. Glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Almighty. You have been merciful to your sinful servant. O God, bless me and help me as I am a sinner. Be always merciful to me, O God. Amen. Confession is meant to be therapeutic in nature. Each sacrament ensures us the presence of God. In confession, we experience the merciful and forgiving presence of Christ. As St. Augustine beautifully puts it, And certainly from you, O Lord, before whose eyes the depth of the human conscience is laid bare, what in me could be hidden, even though I were unwilling to confess it to you? I could not then be hiding myself from you, but you from myself. So let us be repentant, confess our sins, and purify our body, mind, and soul. Oh,